morning. My name's Linda and welcome to Macra Cattery. Hi Linda, I'm David. Nice to meet you David. This is your first time at Macra? Yes it is. Okay, pop your baby there. Right, what we do David now is I ask you, has your cat been defleed recently? Oh no, she hasn't. Right, so what I do is I deflee them with Frontline from the vet and I'm the only cattery in Wellington that actually deflees cat but I find it a lot easier to deflee a cat when they come in and then no one goes home with fleas and everybody's happy. And your baby's pretty timid, you were saying to me. Yes, she is. She she's is. a bit afraid of, um, of other cats and she's had some bad experiences in other catteries. Right, so what we'll do is we'll put your baby in a cage and if she doesn't seem to settle, I have a little outside area which I call the penthouse. If she's not going to mix, I can pop her out there for the day. Or over the other side I have what I call the cottage and it has 14 cages and they're not caged, they just get the whole category to themselves. But we'll see how your baby goes, might be the best thing when she comes in. They um, go to bed about 5 o'clock at night and then they're let out again at 7. We get the old ones in so we give them hotties for at night time. If your baby's on drugs we give them their, their medication, then they all get fed individually. Then they go to bed in their little cocoons and that's them for the night. Then they come out in the morning and we do the cleaning and we do the feeding and we see which ones that I've got in the cage that are not very happy so we just leave them. Sometimes a cat will come in and it won't eat for about three or four days which is pretty serious because they can dehydrate so we rush them to the vet which has happened and we try to get them started. Sometimes they have eight bowls of food in there but some cats just shut down and you've got to be so careful because it's very sick, it can affect the kidneys pretty quickly. But the majority of the cats are fantastic. They all get on because it's not their home. And at Christmas I have 90 cats in here, and usually out of that 90 I only have two caged, or three. We come in here at four o'clock, there's three of us that do it over Christmas. By the time we've gone in there and start picking up the kitty trays, half of them are in their cages waiting for dinner. Very intelligent, I call them little people in fur coats. It's like a little kindergarten. So they do know what's going on, and when the owners come to pick them up, some are waiting at the door, can't wait to get out of Auntie Linda's, and some hide, and they race up on the roof. Then you go to get them and they take off on the other side, so they don't want to go home. But as soon as a car comes down the drive and it belongs to the cat, they're here. <laughs> take me home, Mum. They're very intelligent, it's a, it's a lovely place that you can have all your cats out, because I don't believe in caging cats. Um, if you get one that takes to me when I go to cholera, then I know it's a bit stressed. I'm usually the one that gets beat up, so we just let it chill out for a few days and then it can come out into the, to the main category. You've got everything planned here and it's good to know that um, you're going to take care of my cat which is a little bit afraid of other cats. You'd be surprised yep. when you come back, David, it might be a different cat. <laughs> we do get them that they, they hiss and tiss, but they're all full of baloney. They're usually pretty good, the cats. Um, people come here because they like the way the cats can come out because they're not usually caged. A lot of catteries there are in cages like mine but they're not let out and I think they just love coming out to play and the beauty of this cattery is they're so, I've built it up with all the toys that they're not actually in their faces, they're up high so that way they're not having to mix quite close together. I think that's the beauty of this cattery. So they've got lots of toys, they get very spoilt and uh, I love them all. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm convinced. So, yes, I think I, I will. Um... You'll be happy leaving your baby. Yes. So, tell me about the pricing before right. I go. It's per night. If your cat comes in, it's $13 a night. Your de fleeing is $17. Your trip to the vet, if I had to take your cat, is $10 each way to the vet because I have to go in with the appointment, um, which is pretty reasonable because you're down in macro and you've sort of got to go up to the city. My guys get spoiled. If I've got a half a dozen cats and they'll all get meat at night, I don't just give them the bickies. I feel sorry for them, so I go and buy nice meat and they get their meat. Some of them get little bits of milk and I have people bring in raw meat all cut up in packets, so we label everything. We label all their bowls if they're on specials. Um, and they all seem to be pretty happy. Cats do come in here for a long time. I've had them here for six months. People go overseas and they seem to be going for a bit longer now. One man just took two away, he stayed here for 40 days. Now he's left this morning with the cats, he took his boys over and now he's taking the cats. 
So he's going over to Australia to set up his two 18 year old boys over there and live over there for a while. Unfortunately, you can have that a cat can die in the catarina. Thank the Lord I've only had two, and that was with heart attacks. But you always think there's something you've done wrong. And it's not really what you've done, it's just we all get old, and that's what happens in life. But the people that have supported me over the 10 years, marvellous people. Absolutely, they all know me as Auntie Linda and Karori, and I'm very lucky because the Karori vet is one of the main people that send the cats here. I haven't really had to advertise over the years. It's not busy all the time like at the moment, I've only got about eight cats in. Your peak time is your Christmas and your school holidays. But as long as it pays the bills, we will we'll stay here. It's all you can do. This is Milo. Now Milo's a newbie. He belongs with um, Millie. Been going to Christchurch to live. But he's got attitude. Is our mama, is our um, auntie darling. He gives you, gives you loves and then he turns on you. But you're still cool, aren't you? You're doing some talking for David. You're going to do some talking for David. You tell him. You tell David. I know, you do a lot of talking. I know, attitude. Now this one's got the paper towels. I know, baby. I know you're not happy being here. But that's life. Then we've got Stevie having a little chill out on the roof over here. Hi Stevie. You just leave my paper towels alone, mister. Hey, get up. Oh, and here's one. This is a little hider, hider as well. Here we go. Who's in here? This is where they hide, David. They go and hide in their little cocoons. They're just not quite brave enough. That one came out yesterday, so that was good. But quite not brave enough to do the whole day trip. You'll fall out your bed. She'll fall out your bed. You will. And then he's got a mate who's actually come out, so that's good. When do they come out of their little hiding hutches? When they feel safe, yeah, it's when they feel secure. But he was out yesterday and his mate wasn't, so his mate's out somewhere hiding. Listen to that little one beside us. And then who else we got there? Give Stevie. He's hiding up in the own. Oh, Stevie Weavy. to my baby. And then we got Molly and Max over here. Max is out. Molly doesn't really come out, do you? Hey, you hide yourself away, but the doors are open. It's all you can really do, and when they feel comfortable, they will come out. And they all do their poos, as you can see, in the kitty trays on the floor, which is good. And most cats are very clean. You do get the odd one that's dirty, but it's quite rare, so out of the... Steve's gonna come and give you a love behind. <laughs> Aren't you Stevie? You say, I'm mm. up here, don't forget me. It's wanting attention. It's all it is, they just love attention. You don't come down and look for trouble, Missy. You just get your little butter in your cage if you're going to be naughty. But they're pretty good, all the cats. And we just change kitty trays. I, don't, I, can, I stand over cats when they poo. And I say, hurry up, hurry up. And they're actually really quite good. I, ca I can know if a cat's done a business in here because you can smell it. So I'm pretty quick with kitty trays because a lot of cats will go and sniff other poos and that's not healthy. What do you think you're doing up there? Are you following David round? Is that what it is? He wants more attention. You just, look at it, it's, it's so stressed over the years. It's got no tail, it's as bald as a badger. So he, he's a stressed cat, you can see that, but that's good he's come out. Has he just lost hair on his tail? His tail and his bum all around his bottom mm. and his back. I think he's an older cat, I haven't had him before. Oh, that's right, you ripped the chair to pieces. What are you doing down there, little tooth? Don't you go out there and be mean to anybody. Here's an old gumpy bum. You are. You're gonna jump? Are you like David, I think? Some cats really love men, and some cats don't like females. Oh, really? <laughs> there is it. Come on, then. Come on, if you think you're that good. Come on, Bubba. Oh, so do a lot of talking.
You do a lot of talking. This is where the roof is really good for the cats because they can get out of their faces. He's a great talker, that one. Well, it's great that they've got so much freedom to do whatever they want to do here. I've ended up with a few bashes. I had 27 stitches down my arm from one cat when I first started here. I didn't have the ladder system for the roof and I went up on a big ladder and it was only about this big and I went to pick it up and it took to me and I slipped off the ladder and there was a nail sticking out so 27 stitches. It wasn't really the cat's fault, I was just a newbie at the, jo at the job. <laughs>